Dating in 2022 is also kind of like being in a burning building that you just want to run the hack out of because it's frightening. No, but really. Anyways, hello, my name is Monica. Thank you for coming back to my channel, my vlog, my mental health channel. My vlog is so many different things. This is a long-awaited video. I have promised you guys this video for a while, and I'm gonna tell you guys about three different situations that are applicable to my dating life. So I'm gonna tell you three different stories, and yeah, we're just gonna kinda see what happens from there, so here we go. If any of you have experience with online dating, in 2022, just recently, in the past few years since the COVID hit, let me know. Hit hit the like button. I just want to see how many people are involved in this. But besides the point, okay. The first person that I'm going to tell you about, and I'm obviously not going to say any names because some of these people you know, follow my Facebook or, you know, other social media. And I do not, I'm just not like that. This first person is actually the most recent person that I went on a date with. I'm going to call him, um, K. We started talking on Facebook dating. That's kind of like actually all three of these guys. We started talking on Facebook dating. So there you go. There's that. K was super cute. Um, funny it was just one of those where you know you just clicked right away the conversation came really easy we talked for like a few weeks and then he asked me out on a date and he was like do you want to go out to dinner and he lived decently far away like in Lansing so it would have been like a 45 minute drive for me halfway to get there 45 minute drive for him to get there halfway so anyways I said yes I was so nervous. I was driving out there. I texted my mom. I'm just like, this is where I'm going to be because, you know, safety first, you guys. Really quick disclaimer. If you're going to be dating online with people that you've really never met, make sure that you have friends involved, have code words, things like that. So that if you're ever in trouble, heaven forbid you're ever in trouble, you can contact somebody and they know how to help you and where you are. Anyways. At first, I'm just like, oh my gosh, okay, I'm so nervous to meet him. I pull up at the restaurant, and I'm a few minutes early. And so then, you know, obviously, I'm just like sitting there, like waiting. And he said that he drove a black truck, and I'm just like, oh my gosh. Uh, so the whole parking lot was full. Like, this restaurant was packed. And all of a sudden, the parking space right next to me, they left. And sure enough, I see a black truck pull into the parking lot, one space available, he pulls in right next to me. And I look over at him and he looks at me like right at the same time and it's just like smiling, instant smiling. So I'm like, okay, so far good start and what are the odds of like this whole parking space thing, right? We have dinner, everything honestly goes so well, like too well. I, I remember leaving the restaurant after dinner and I was just like, I told my, I called my mom and I was just like, I really, really, really like him. And I, I don't do that. At least I haven't done that in five, six years because I don't give anybody the time of day really. I, I'm not going to lie. I have some, you guys know me and my trust issues, my anxiety. Come on. Come on. <laughs> so that was wild enough and then so that night we texted each other him and I Kay and I and yeah we had a really good time you know I want to see you again that type of a thing and then we made plans to go to a movie it's like our next little date thing so long story short we get to the movie we are sitting there you know like during the preview section there's still people coming into the theater and everybody's still talking and things like that he's showing me pictures on his phone so he's just like going like this and all of a sudden he comes across, I see a picture of this young man in a hospital bed and it shows like you know obviously all like the tubes and the wires and all that stuff and then it shows a leg that's amputated like 
from below the knee and I didn't know who it was. I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, who is that? That's terrible. He's like, that's me. I was like, that's you? What? Um, so that was weird. First of all, I should have probably said a little bit before this. When I got to the movie theater, he was acting different than he did the night before when we went to dinner. He was more touchy-feely, trying to like kiss me and stuff, just a little bit more forward and blunt and different, I guess. So I got that vibe kind of right off the bat, but I just kind of thought nothing of it. I'm just like, whatever, I'm excited to see this movie, blah, blah, blah. When he showed me that picture, I was shocked, but again, I wasn't like, I'm not gonna, you know, just let this accident that happened to him make me think any different of him or his abilities, because obviously I didn't even have a clue. Couldn't tell by the way he walked or anything like that. So it was just super, super, super weird. Um, but also fine at the same time. What was not okay was how grabby and touchy and feely he was during the movie and it made me very, very uncomfortable. It was almost like I wanted to crawl out of my skin and get out of there and I could tell that he was openly, <clears throat> he was openly irritated when I would like, kind of like push away or be like, you know, or he, he got like openly annoyed and that didn't sit well with me. So when he went to go, he, this, is, this is kind of how I knew that I wasn't gonna see Kay again. At the end of the movie, we were both walking out to our cars and he went in to, to give me a kiss. And it, again, it just after the whole night, it just felt so forced and wrong. I was just kind of, and I like kind of backed away. I could kind of tell. That, and he kind of could tell that I was pushing away from him and I was just like, I, I want to go home, you know, like I just want to go home. I And I think I used Tucker as an excuse too to get home, like Tucker needs to get outside or something like that. But I knew that I wasn't going to see Kay again because I was opening my car door to get in and he just gave me one last final like smack on the butt. and. I never heard from him again. I never texted him again. <laughs> and that's the story of Kay. This next guy that I'm going to tell you about, I don't really have a nickname for him, but he looked he looks just like Evan Peters from American Horror Story. And I love Evan Peters, so I was just like, wow, he's cute. And again, met on Facebook dating, yes. Um, I actually never met him in person. We talked on FaceTime, Facebook Messenger, you know, we texted, all that stuff for a week. Like a week straight. And a few days into like our conversations and stuff, like I noticed he he was clingy to the point where it was like freaking me out a little bit. Like, like if I didn't respond back to a message that he sent within a few hours, he was sending me like question marks and all that stuff. And I'm busy. I have a busy schedule and he knew that. I explained that to him. So that was kind of like really off-putting. He was like, I'm ready for marriage, I want to get married, you know, we would jokingly like talk about all that, like, oh yeah, let's just go to the courthouse and just get it over with, blah blah blah, it was, you know, kind of funny. At the end of like that week of him and I just talking and him just really pressuring me like, why aren't, like, like if I didn't respond to him, why aren't you responding to me, what are you doing? all of that stuff it was way too much it was overwhelming and I hadn't even met him yet I hadn't even met this I didn't even meet him and he was acting like we were really something he told his whole family about me within that week it was just you guys it was it was just too much so at the end of that week I 
sent him a message and I'm just like, I think that, you know, you're really, really nice, but I don't think that we're a good fit. And I said, I just don't want to pursue this any further, really. And how I knew that was the right decision was because he responded like, thanks for wasting my time. First of all, if I wanted to waste his time, I could have really wasted his time and mine, which I'm not gonna do. I didn't even meet him. How did I waste his time? It was one week. And it, to me, it takes one week to kind of talk to somebody, to see if you vibe with them, to even see if you want to meet him in person. But regardless, that's the guy that I never met and never will. <laughs> At least I don't think I ever will. I don't really know. But last person that I'm going to tell you about, I actually knew him through a few mutual friends and saw him on Facebook dating. I'd always thought he was cute, but I never really knew much about him. So I swiped right and so did he. And so we started talking, and, you know, mutual connections, things like that. Since I knew him, um, I felt totally comfortable with having him over for a quick movie day and it was during the day so it's not like it was a Netflix and chill type of a thing. It wasn't like that at all. He came over to hang out. Him and Tucker got, got along like a house on fire which was super super cool. Um, Tucker loves male males. He just obviously he doesn't get that type of energy from me or Tia and Tamara. So whenever a guy comes over, Tucker's like, ah, you know, finally I get bro time. But what was weird about this, so watching the movie, I forget which movie it was, but out of nowhere, he did like, he's sitting literally like, actually we were sitting right here. <laughs> he was sitting like over here and he like grabbed my face and did one of these that I was looking toward him. And he was like, and he kissed me and I, out of nowhere, out of nowhere. I literally think that I said, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, it felt, it just did not feel right. It was like when your aunt or your uncle gives you a little peck or something like that. Like it just, it just, it didn't feel right. Granted, like I see, I see, I saw so much potential in him. He's gonna be great for somebody. I highly doubt that that person is me, but nonetheless, <laughs> the vibes just weren't there. You guys know that I'm an energy person. I'm gonna know if I'm gonna get on with somebody very, very, very quickly. Dating in 2022 is not for the weak. It's really not. You gotta have tough skin. You gotta be okay hearing no and getting turned down. You have to be okay kind of going with the flow and kind of getting your expectations squashed sometimes too. So I tell you, if anybody has any tips for me, <laughs> let me know because again, this, is, this whole dating thing, uh, it's pretty wild. We'll see what happens. Until the next video, which I do have planned for you guys, it's going to be a good one and it includes my family. So you guys are going to get to see my family. But anyways, thank you guys so much again for tuning in and watching. I appreciate you all so much. You matter. You're enough. Tucker agrees. We will see you guys next time. Bye.